Hello everybody, this is Tyler, welcome back to another video. I think I mentioned this in my 2020 prediction video yesterday, but I am going to do a video about past elections. And, well, the first election I'll be starting off at is the most recent presidential election, the 2016 presidential election, uh, fought mainly between uh, Gary, uh, Donald Trump, Hillary Clinton, and to a lesser extent, Gary Johnson. So here we have an electoral map, or not really an electoral map, my map of the 2016 election here with uh, the states that went for Donald Trump and the states that went for uh, Hillary Clinton. Uh, and so uh, this electoral count can kind of be deceiving. There are often two electoral counts given to the 2016 election. That is the Trump at 306 and Clinton at 232. Now, that is the electoral vote by electors who they were elected to. But what really happened is that Mr. Trump got 304 and Ms. Clinton got 227. This is because of faithless electors. If you don't know what faithless electors are, they are people that uh, cast their vote for someone who is not their, uh, the, uh, can the candidate that their state voted for. So basically they go against the will of the people and vote for whoever they wanted to. Uh, three of those electoral vote uh, those uh, electoral voters voted for um, or electors voted for the former Secretary of State Colin Powell. Uh, he wasn't even running. Uh, some voted for Bernie Sanders. Uh, one did, uh, though others tried. Uh, someone voted for Rand Paul. Uh, another person voted for someone. I believe their name was Faith Spotted Eagle, something like that. Uh, and um, another voted there uh, voted for uh, John Kasich. Uh, the uh, one of uh, Donald Trump's uh, Republican primary contenders. Uh, so yeah, the electoral map though it didn't change any of the states, it did change the exact totals. Uh, and so well, here's that map. So th this was a very well for anyone. It was a very shocking result, mainly because well it's kind of the narrative from the beginning was that it was going to be a Hillary Clinton presidency, and. The real thing that secured uh, President Trump's victory was uh, his victory over Clinton in Wisconsin and Michigan, as well as Florida. But the main one, the main one that convinced Hillary Clinton to concede the election was when it was announced that Donald Trump had won the state of Pennsylvania. That is what decided the election completely. Yes, it was a very, very, very close uh, race in Pennsylvania. Overall, about 70,000 votes decided the 2016 election. Uh, I really need to make a video explaining how unfair the Electoral College is and why it goes against the will of the people. But that is how the Electoral College went in 2016. Uh, so, yes, uh, uh, Clinton lost many of the states that she was expected to win. Now, uh, here's a more exact map of the popular vote. Uh, the election of 2016 is one of the five elections in which a uh, candidate – in which the winner lost the popular vote. The others being 2000, uh, 1890, I mean 1888, I believe, uh, 1824, and I am actually forgetting one. Uh, it was uh, John Quincy Adams. Oh yeah, in 1876 uh, between Tilden and Hayes. Uh, but here's a uh, breakdown of the popular vote. Uh, Clinton got 48%. Trump got 46%. Gary Johnson, the libertarian, got three. It was really, in reality, 3.3%. And Jill Stein from the Green Party got just over 1%. The others, mainly consisting of the independent candidate, Evan McMullen, who tried to win his homestead of Utah, and the Constitution Party candidate, Daryl Castle, made up that remaining 1% of the vote. A few others, like the uh, Oh, they're not really exact parties that they got below 100,000 votes and they made up a very small portion of that remaining 1%. Um, so uh, let's talk about the primary races there for a little bit. Now, I don't really have anything specifically to talk about regarding the primary races. The uh, uh, Democratic primary was initially expected to be an easy blowout win for Clinton. But Bernie Sanders and to a lesser extent Martin O'Malley put up a much more difficult fight. And it was – now we know that many uh, uh, shady deals went on during the DNC that cost Bernie the nomination. Uh, the Republican nomination was uh, nearly as bad as this year's Democratic primary. There were 16 major Republican candidates running for president, and I'm not going to mention all of them. 
because I don't even think I can memorize all of them. But the major ones you got to know are, of course, Trump, Ted Cruz, Marco Rubio, John Kasich, Ben Carson, Jeb Bush, and Chris Christie. Uh, those were the real major ones. Uh, the best fight was put up by Ted Cruz. He was really the only other one that had a chance win the nomination. And as we know, initially it looked like that Jeb Bush was the front runner. Then Trump slowly creeped his way up to the front and then became a intense fight between Cruz and Trump. Uh, and all the other candidates were kind of wiped out. The uh, last to go was uh, John Kasich in, I believe, early May of 2016. Then by that point, it was clear Trump had won the nomination. Uh, the Libertarians, yes, they actually do have primaries. Um, Gary Johnson won them relatively easily. That's where that whole driver's license thing, the to- the uh, it just Google the Libertarian debate. It's a it's more of a uh, Saturday Night Night Live skit that actually was a real debate for a real political party. Um, and so yes, uh, Jill Stein over here. Uh, well, let's well before I talk about that, uh, let's talk about who took votes from who. A lot of people say. Uh, uh, the rise in third parties this year was caused by uh, the dissatisfaction in both Trump and Clinton. And this is pretty true. Gary Johnson went from getting a 0.9% of the vote in 2012 to 33 here in 2016. Well, it's not 2016 more, uh, in the 2016 election. Uh, m- it is a misconception that Trump voters went for um, Gary Johnson. Many Trump voters went for Evan McMullen or Daryl Castle. Many of Gary Johnson's supporters were actually millennials and uh, other more establishment Democrats who were not for Clinton. Many of Sanders supporters went to uh, Jill Stein. And it. some people try to bring up the uh, something, something saying that uh, Gary Johnson is the reason why Clinton did not win the election. That is not true. Uh, when I get to the 2000 election, I'll explain the same thing with Nader. He did not cost Bush – I mean, Gore, the election. I will get to that in uh, a later video if I ever uh, decide to uh, do the uh, election of 2000. Um, And, of course, this election, let me go back to this uh, electoral map here, was, of course, a very contentious one. It was a very heated one. Some issues that dominated the campaign were health care, Obama in general, Uh. Foreign policy, fighting ISIS, and of course the many issues that Donald Trump either started or brought up, like immigration, uh, terrorism, specifically relating uh, relating to uh, radical or uh, Islamic terrorism, uh, and ISIS. Uh, there were uh, Hillary Clinton's emails. There were Donald Trump's various uh, scandals relating to him, and. Overall, was many people did not like the two candidates, which explains the rise in third-party candidates like Johnson and Stein. Um, though it initially looked like Clinton would be a blowout victory. In fact, Trump himself believed that he would not end up being president. But throughout October, the Clinton's lead shrank. And by election day, most of the media, well, all the major media networks, still believed that it would be a Clinton victory. Uh, though once it was unveiled that Florida had gone to Trump, people began to doubt that. The mood at the Hillary Clinton headquarters began to uh, darken a little bit, though she still had a very clear path to victory by that point. Though it was when Michigan and Wisconsin were called for Trump that – it really began to go bad. Uh, people were beginning to think that Trump would win the election. And I forgot exactly when it was. I believe it was around 1 in the morning that Pennsylvania was called for Trump. And then that was it. Hillary Clinton called – or she had actually had to be convinced by Obama himself to concede the election. She had not actually written a concession speech. She was so uh, determined that she was going to win that she did not write a concession speech, which is why she did not make – give a concession speech until around 8 or 9 a.m. the next day. I forgot exactly what it was. I do remember watching it live, though. But, um, yeah, it was a very surprising result. Very very many people called it uh, or compared it to the 1948 election in which Dewey was expected to win, and that's where the famous uh, Dewey defeats Truman uh, newspaper clip uh, came from. But, um, Anyways, yeah, this was a very unexpected election, and uh, its consequences obviously are still in effect today. And um, yes, it's just a very divisive election in American history. 
Um, yeah, it's kind of hard to talk about it without getting too political, and it's very hard to remain independent when talking about this election. And I'm, I'm trying not to uh, bring my political op opinions into uh, this debate but or to this video, but basically – Hillary lost the election due to her overconfidence. Uh, Trump does know how to run a campaign, and he ran it in a very well – well, it, it was a – the campaign was so off the rails. The Trump campaign was so off the rails that it, it worked. It, it, it gained a huge amount of momentum. The more – every time he said something uh, considered outrageous, the media would broadcast it, and more people would see it, and they think, hey, this guy's really saying some stuff, and it – Sprout, and uh, it was Hillary Clinton's overconfidence was a m major reason why she lost the election. She very rarely campaigned in states like Michigan, Wisconsin, even though she did end her campaign in Pennsylvania with a rally there. That was one of the few rallies there, uh, and it, w it was just uh, a poorly ran campaign. It was – she thought she was going to win. She had too much confidence in herself, uh, and it, that's what ended up costing Hillary Clinton the election. Uh, so the final results for the election, let me go back here, of course, were this. But Hillary Clinton won roughly 65 million votes. Donald Trump won roughly 63 million votes. Gary Johnson won 4.5 million votes. Jill Stein won, I believe, 1.4 million votes. Evan McMullen, who ran in Utah and got 21% of the vote in Utah specifically, won 730,000 votes, and Daryl Castle from the Constitution Party won roughly 200,000 votes. The rest of the candidates, who I don't even know, they were not very significant, clearly, because they would have gotten less than 100,000 votes, uh, had very little impact, or basically no impact, sorry, very minor third parties, on the overall election. It was the... Um, let's talk about the uh, third parties here for a little bit. Uh, the Gary Johnson's performance was the best performance by a libertarian candidate, period. It was also the best performance of a third-party candidate since Ross Perot in 1996 when he ran for the Reform Party and got 8% of the vote and just over 8 million votes. Um, it was a very good year for the Libertarian Party, and it initially I, – I, I'm going to talk about this a little bit. I do believe that the Libertarian Party blew it in 2016. Gary Johnson was – basically a, a 10% there for a while, and he just didn't capitalize on it. And his, his he kind of ran out of steam, and the campaign didn't really go anywhere. Yes, he still made a huge, a great performance for a third-party candidate. It's just that it didn't really go anywhere. He didn't capitalize on the momentum he had in July and June. It was uh, such a big blown up or missed opportunity for the Libertarian Party. So what's the 2018 uh, congressional races? We might have had a Libertarian win an election, but the party did not commit itself. Yes, I am aware that there is a Libertarian in the House of Representatives, ne Representatives now, but they were not elected. The representative was a Republican, switched to Independent, and then switched to Libertarian. And he's also not running for re-election, so don't expect him to stay. So, yeah, the Libertarian Party is sadly an opportunity uh, example of a party that missed its own opportunity a very very similar to uh ukip and uh great britain uh and well that is all for this video i'm may, might do a video on the 2012 election uh this is kind of a basic not really effort heavy video because of uh not really doing that much editing wise or graphics wise it's just these two tabs here um well, that will be all for this video. Thank you to anyone who watched. Bye-bye.